Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In my last video, Matt Murray, horticulturalist at the Blue Mountains Botanic Gardens in Mount Teuma, took us on a spring flower walk. I absolutely love that walk and Matt is such a legend. I think he's probably the most Australian tour guide we were able to find and I had such a blast taking the tour by even just editing the video. Um, I had so much fun listening to his stories and getting all of his insight. If you haven't watched that too already, I will link it in the description as well as at the end screen. I think it's definitely worthwhile watching. But while I was there, and because it's a bit of a drive, I thought let's just go and have a look through the rest of the gardens that wasn't part of the tour as well. But this time around, I'm going to be the tour guide. So it's going to be way less informative than Matt's tour, but I hope you're still going to enjoy the video. It's definitely a visual feast. So let's get right into it. Oh, and by the way, my first merch sample has arrived. I think I quite like it, but I have to see, you know, what it looks like when it goes through the wash and so on. Still very early days in my merch journey, but this is the first like sample that arrived. So I thought I'll share it with you. Anyway, let's have a look. those so I think look at this I think we just a little bit early it's not in flower yet Wonga Wonga wine but this one over here is a Japanese wisteria and it is just having the butt's coming up. Ah, oh, this is going to look so stunning in a couple of weeks' time. And great view. So, so let's let's check out the coffee. Alrighty, feeling replenished. Replenished. Ate a lot of food. Let's explore the rest of the garden. Matt recommended looking at this plant. They're just starting now. We have huge amount of rhododendrons. The reds. <laughs> the, yeah, the reds are really nice. This is this is a good red, but down at the bottom of the garden is what I think is the best red. It's a it's a really nice one called Bibiani. So, oh my god, I was really zoomed in the whole time. <laughs> so Matt recommended looking at this plant. Yeah, these are like really deep red flowers, which apparently are quite special. And lots of tree ferns in this garden. They love the cool climate, which makes sense. Uh, you know, the tree fern fiber that I get is from New Zealand. And uh, New Zealand is a bit cooler than Australia. All right, let's see what else we can find. Oh, look at this, some magnolia. Um, what I always love about these, and they're blooming in Sydney uh, already, um, much more advanced than they are over here at this time of the year. But what I love about those is that the flowers come first. Yeah, it must be a magnolia, based on what Matt told us earlier about the furry bits, that would make sense. Still hasn't completely eliminated predators. But yeah, I love that they just grow the flowers first, so you have like a full tree just full of huge flowers. Uh, well, eventually. Uh, lots of little spring bulbs everywhere. Matt just explained the difference between snowflakes and snowdrops, and I still don't remember. These are leucogerms, which are known as snowflakes. Can you see them? They're white with six petals that are all the same length. And these are snowdrops, which are really closely related, but they had three petals that are long and three that are short. So that's the difference between snowdrops and snowflakes. But one, they're, they're one of them, either a snowflake or a snowdrop. Probably a drop. They look more like a drop to me. But when I edit this video, <laughs> I'll probably find out when I rewatch this part. 
And as Matt said, like the 150,000 bulbs was just that specific area over there, but they have tulips and they have daffodils everywhere throughout the gardens. So yeah, like he said, it's most likely heaps more than 150,000. It doesn't mean that they're all flower at the same time and they might not all flower every year. Uh, so yeah. yeah, I would have guessed way less actually just by looking at it. Look at this big, beautiful tree. Wow. Just for size reference. That's me. And I'm not a tiny person, so. Whee! But what's also quite interesting to see, see how there's just absolutely nothing growing underneath, right? So. Um, must be similar to like eucalyptus for example where they just have some sort of oil that just basically eliminates competition right um, yeah that's what the ladies um, there was two ladies that joined the tour earlier this morning as well and they said they're having a lot of trouble with a lot of the plants and then Matt asked them like are they under a tree and they're like yeah under a eucalyptus tree gum trees gum trees are tough what they do is in their leaves they, they have resins yeah and the resins are not good because the resins are actually to to stop other plants competing with them yeah so it's not particularly good property for uh purists unfortunately yeah now quite often people ask us oh what can grow underneath conifers or gum trees i say oh such tough because conifers are a bit similar they drop their needles and they do the same just to reduce competition nothing growing there the wattle i've been obsessed with wattles at the moment they're in bloom everywhere I mean, even just on the highway on the way here, left and right, so many wattles. And it's like, I'm, this is my, I think, 11th or 12th year in Australia. And I feel like I only noticed them last year for the first time. Honestly, I feel like, so, I feel like I was so blind when it comes to all of these things just a couple of years ago. So I'm really grateful to have this heightened appreciation for plants these days like honestly life is so much better if you can just walk through the world just looking at plants all the time you definitely end up happier there's another cool tree over here see some cherry and there's a lot of pollinators i can hear them Don't run, bud. Run! <laughs> okay. So, here's like a cute little garden. And as you can see, we are in the mountains. Spotted something over there. It's another one of those... Um, Look at them, don't you think they look like um, caviar, like fish roe, but from far away, ah, wrong side, from far away, it just looks like this huge cloud, huge pink cloud, how cool is that? That's pretty, the other one was nicer though. Okay, and we came to a dead end, so let's head back. Yeah, have a look at this house. That is definitely goals with this view. But, doesn't matter where you are, you can always hear bloody cars. But then, I mean, I'm complaining about the car noise, but if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here, right? <laughs> so, fair enough. No, you want things to be accessible, but then you also want it to be isolated. I don't know. Classic me. All right, we're back in like 
think we, the start of the rock garden is indicated by the rocks. And I'm just trying to repeat what Matt said to sound a little more uh, knowledgeable. But he basically said that South Africa, South America and Australia have very similar fauna because they used to all be one, right? Gondwana. And they always look a little like alien. But I absolutely love that. And I think it's so fascinating to see these plants thriving in such harsh conditions. Some aloe vera. And Bloomski. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. That's super pretty. What is this? Like a sea bed. This is cool. Unfortunately, no label on here. Or at least not that I can see. Some more succulents. More aloe vera. This is Protea. Pixie! Look, I'm just reading out the names. I don't have actually any knowledge about them. But if there's a label, I can read. I saw this one at the nursery recently and I really love the dark burgundy color. That's nice. But it doesn't really... Like it's nice, but it's also... Compared to everything else here, it's actually not that nice. Look at this one. Let's just go with Swartkop. Sounds very South African. Uh, but look at the flowers. Pretty cool. Wild. Look how colorful everything looks. It's beautiful. Another one here. And more Protea. I think I need a protea in my garden. How can I not have one, huh? This is beautiful as well. Ah, oh, that's nice. Oh my god, this one is perfect. And so fluffy on the inside. So cool. Oh. oh, I need to grow some. Look at this one over here. Slightly different, I think. Maybe just more advanced. I don't know. And this one, the black and white one. We saw them earlier as well. Uh, I think Matt was uh, <laughs> giving him a, <laughs> giving himself a facial with it. So soft. Like, I wish you could feel that. And look at that, it's like little rabbit's feet. It actually reminds me of um, the little fur between Brett's toes. Why is this not focusing? Hello, do you want to focus please? Yeah, it reminds me of the little fur between Brett's toes. What goes down must come up, so let's go back up the hill. Yeah, right, so this is the bottom of the rock garden. We just need to go back up to the cafe. Oh, this is pretty. Look at the bees. I thought this is pollinated by birds. Oh, 
I spotted something. Look at these carnivorous plants. So many. So very swampy over here. Uh, I mean, they've seen better days. Actually, this corner is a little more shaded and they're doing much better over here. That's cool. Uh, and all throughout there as well. Must just not be their season right now. All right, let's keep climbing up the rocks. Look at this. This is cool. I have no idea what it is, but the new leaves come out really white and furry. And then over time they become uh, normal, I suppose. But at this stage, honestly, houseplant collectors would just cut it and sell it as frost blizzard <laughs> blizzard frost ultra rare oh my god ultra rare but as a whole i actually really really love this oh, and this is the name from new zealand guys ultra rare ultra rare look half moon <laughs> all right look at all of these are these paper daisies no huh Alrighty, so these are pink everlasting from South Africa, but they're not all pink, but that's okay. Uh, little cacti over here, but I also wanted to just have a quick browse over there. Like this is so fascinating to me. We've got succulents, we've got cacti, alo aloe vera, but we also have some like really dainty looking flowers. Uh, some Australian natives at the top over there, all just on these like rocky gardens. Very nice um, variety. Oh, waterfall, tree ferns. Wow. And just to the other side. The mountains. All right, I found a plant. I have no idea what it is. I can't find a label. But you cannot tell me that this doesn't look like Shrek. Look at each individual flower has like these two. Why is this not focusing? Yeah, each flower has like these two individual little Olga ears. Don't you think this looks like Shrek? Somehow. Maybe I'm delusional. Like, look at this. Doesn't this look like Shrek? Somehow? I don't know. Okay. These are so cool. I think I can't not take a protea home with me today. Oh, I like these ones. They look so beautiful and white and they feel so soft. You guys are missing out. Oh. Look at that! Wow, how majestic! There's so many things that I thought were like native to Australia that are actually South African, but now that Matt explained it, it all makes sense. Which means we need to go to South Africa. Oh, here we're back at the, oh, I already forgot her name again, Erica. It's an Erica, and her species name was a little more complicated than that. Look at the bird. Oh, I mean, if you thought I had no idea about plant names, I'm useless with bird names, but can you see him? Like super nice and red. Hello, bird. Yeah, it could be anything at this stage. Ah! All right, so we've done the rock garden and the brunette garden. Let's have a quick look at the forest walk and the plant explorer walk. But um, it's been a long day already. And so straight away, you can see we have more coverage over here. 
Um, so, shadier conditions. Look at this, taking over. I think that's that same fern again that Matt was showing us earlier. As I said, we have lots and lots of ferns at Mount Tomar, and this is another one. Can you see this thing here? This is called a thumbnail fern, or it's also called pyrosia. And we find them here, they grow over the trees, over the rocks, they're super tough. Got a tree fern, and then another fern hitchhiking. That's nice. Oh, there's that fern again. I think that's so cool how it climbs up these trees. Hang on, is that a rhododendron? Yes, so this is a rhododendron. Huge! I always thought they're like little bushes. I didn't realize they were full on trees. Good on them. Very interesting actually to have a little read through all of those as well, but you can just take a screenshot. Alrighty, and that's it for today. I really, really loved today. I think that that was so informative, but also enjoyable. Um, it was nice to get out in the sun, explore part of Sydney I've never been to. So that was amazing. So if you have the opportunity to check out the Botanic Garden in Mount Toma, I highly recommend it. I also put their website in the description so you can learn more about uh, all of their three sites because they have a third one. They have a botanic garden in Mount Annan um, and that botanic garden is known for its natives. So we've got the one in the city which is like the touristy one, you know. You've got this one over here which is the cool climate one and then they've got the one in, in Mount Annan that is uh, the natives and they currently have a huge paper daisy display. So let me know if you want me to go there as well and of course I'll take you along. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe and leave a nice comment and I'll see you next time. Bye!